everybody. Welcome back to Project Happy Home. To those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, a lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 12, 9, and 7. If you are interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and or living a more essentialist lifestyle, you've come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button somewhere down below the video over there. I've also attempted to organize several of my curriculum reviews by grade level as well as by subject area. So if you're interested, for example, in science videos or science curricular reviews, check out my science playlist, which I will attempt to link in the description box down below. And if you're interested in grade two in particular, like language arts, geography, etc., check out my grade two playlist where you'll find that information. Um, on this channel, I do several videos that are curriculum reviews in particular. Some of them will be flip throughs. When they are a flip through, I will tell you that I haven't used the curriculum before. When they are a review, I will let you know that as well. I always let you know if I'm an affiliate of a company. For example, I am an affiliate of Evan Moore. I am very proud to be one because I think they make great products, particularly for homeschoolers. And we have been using Evan Moore throughout the five years that we have been homeschooling. This is my third time with this particular book. You may be able to find a review of it that I have done in years past. But the more experience you have with the book, the more you learn about how it works best for you and your family. And so this is my um, youngest science book this year. It is Evan Moore's Daily Science Grade 2. Now, if you are interested in Daily Science for other grade levels, it does run from grades 1 through 6. She is a hybrid first, second grader. So she is first grade for most language arts and second grade for math and science. The reason I mention that is because the reading level in here is a little bit advanced for her, but even as a first grade reading level, she can manage quite a, f a bit of it on her own. So. She needs my assistance with it, but she can manage a lot of the fill in the blanks and everything by herself. She can read the vocab words, etc. If you have a student who's on grade level for reading, they should be able to do this book on their own. As it mentions on the cover, the book covers six big idea units through four weekly lessons and 24 activity pages as well. There's six hands-on activities. The book includes content vocab, for the subject areas they're learning, comprehension questions, and visual literacy practice. When you take a look at the table of contents, you can see the six big ideas. All living things have different life cycles. Plants and animals look a lot like their parents. Earth contains rock, water, and air. People use all of these things. The sun, the moon, and the stars all have predictable patterns. Sounds are made by vibrating objects. Sounds can travel through solids, liquids, and gases. And magnets make some things move without touching them. They also attract and repel other magnets. Each one of these big ideas includes vocab, which they highlight for you in the table of contents. And it also includes four different questions that run through the big idea. So here with living things and life cycles, you start off by talking about kangaroos and babies in pouches, then caterpillar life cycles, then seeds to trees, then plants and flowers, and then you have a unit review week. And that is the, the sequence that it follows all throughout. If you get this version of the Daily Science book, not the student edition, but the teacher edition, you will have these pages as well, which include a descriptive page of the big idea for the teacher, a description of each week for the teacher, and then answer keys as well in the back. So if I can just show you the answer key, it looks like this. It's not a reproduction of the pages, it's just the answers. It's quite short and sweet. And when you start the book, Here's that daily science big idea description for the teacher that we're talking about. It goes through day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. It's very useful because it includes not only the vocab that the student is going to cover, but exactly what you might say to the student and how you might introduce the topic before they do the worksheet. If you get the student edition of the book, it will not include these pages. It will just include these worksheets. So at the beginning of every day, you have a weekly question, which will repeat for the entire week. It's the same question as you can see. Why do big kangaroos carry their babies in pouches? They'll have a short reading section, which is very age appropriate. This reading section gets longer as the grade levels increase in the daily science unit. A little graphic analysis, and then some fill in the blank with the vocab and the definitions on the side. There's also some talk questions, as you can see down here. Do you think kangaroos have a life cycle like dogs? Why or why not? Tell your partner. Now, in homeschooling, they can tell their siblings, they can tell you, but there are just oral questions. And speaking of, you know, questions that are meant to be answered verbally, you can do that with any type of worksheet. And I often encourage parents, especially new parents to homeschooling, when your child has a resistance to several worksheets, to writing, to um, circling answers, etc., you do not have to push 
that method of answering the question. For example, if your student's just tired of holding a pen, if your student has dysgraphia, there's nothing wrong with going through the reading section with them and then answering these questions verbally. We are looking for understanding, we're looking for comprehension, we're looking for development of these skills, right? We are building on these skills every year. If your student isn't ready to do an entire page of writing, there does not mean they're not ready to absorb this information. So when we look at workbooks, when we look at worksheets, I encourage you to open your mind as to how you would use them to suit your student the best on any given day. Even if your student is fully capable of doing this, if they don't um, feel like doing that particular task, that, that handwriting task, there's no reason why you can't switch it up. There's so many ways to make things like worksheets, things that look 2D into a three-dimensional experience for your student. You can watch a video about the topic, etc. Even more though, by giving you grade level appropriate topics that advance in such an organized and sequential and meaningful way gives you something to hang your schedule on, no matter how you do it. So there is value to workbooks, whether or not your students write in them. And that is just my feeling about well-organized curricula like this. We have different types of activities. So you have yes or no questions, you have fill in the blank, you have um, visual graphics. And then we're on to the week two, still in the same big idea of life cycles, but we're talking about caterpillar life cycles now. And as we go on, you can see there's little illustrations here too to color. I know some people make copies of things like this and put it into their own notebooking books, which is something you can totally do. So for example, here, my student didn't want to write these out herself anymore. So I just wrote out what we talked about for her and that is still a worthwhile lesson. So I feel like a lot of new homeschoolers especially feel like everything has to be done exactly the way it says, and that is not true. So as you go through, you have a lot of practice with different types of questions, matching questions, um, picking the right answers for fill in the blank and circling them versus writing them, trying to figure out how to label pictures and graphic organizers. And this is where we are in this book because we started our school year in January. We're on a January through December school year. And I've got to say, you guys, I love Evan Moore's daily science books. If I had to pick probably my favorite book from them, one of them would definitely be the daily science series that runs from, like I said, grades one through six, and also the, um, daily paragraph editing books. So I have reviews for both of those on my channel if you want to see the insides of those. But as you go through, it's just a really nice sequential orderly process through this. And just to let you know, when you do, for example, the cycle, the water cycle, there's nothing to say that you can't do this whole week and also accompany it with videos and extracurricular activities and labs. You so. can go right through. One thing to point out is that you do have 24 of these hands-on activities in here. So you have labs included. So for weathering rocks, for example, you would have a gravel lab where you use um, tight lids and coffee filters, a strainer, bowl of water and gravel. And then you shake the jars, you put a coffee filter inside the strainer, you pour it, you let the water drain, you see that sandy filter over and over and you look at what the effect of, you know, that actual, um, weathering on the rocks would beat. And I'm just flipping through the pages quickly so that you can see how well the graphics are done. These are really nice things to even photocopy and just put up for the week so they can remember. Here's another lab about observing shadows. We're talking about crickets and anatomy here, echolocation. It's very age appropriate and on grade level, in my opinion. There's magnet labs at the end. So this is grade two's Daily Science by Evan Moore. And I think it is an excellent, excellent foundational science um, curriculum for any homeschooler. I'm excited to use this um, with my youngest. It is a little nostalgic and also bittersweet to know that this will be the last time I'm using this particular grade two uh, daily science book, but it is a wonderful um, addition to our homeschool experience and I think you would enjoy it as well. So if you had any questions about this book, be sure to ask them in the comment box below. I will do my best to answer them. And if you as a viewer have the answers to any questions people are asking, please feel free to answer back. I think it's wonderful when we interact with each other in this space. If you want to see more about my daily homeschooling and what that looks like, 
Um, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Project Happy Home. I share a lot more about our daily lessons and the types of things that we um, do for fun and for enrichment, etc. So again, I am an affiliate for Evan Moore. If you want to look in the description box down below and click on my link, you'll be able to see the inside of Daily Science as well as any of the other Evan Moore workbooks. And as always, I appreciate your support when you use my affiliate links. I also appreciate your time. Thank you so much for spending some of it with me. And I wish you the very best day.